You're watching Toddy D's Pro Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Brooklyn's own Toddy D. And today I'm back and I'm here to discuss and share another interview that Brooklyn Zone did back in 2007. That's right. I've shared so far my interview with the Million Dollar Man's AKA alleged slave, Virgil. I shared my interview with Tammy, AKA Sonny, from the Body Donna Sitch. That interview so far on Brooklyn Zone's YouTube channel has garnered almost 800 views. Not going to say thank you, everyone. I'm going to say you're welcome. That's right. You're welcome that Brooklyn Zone was nice enough to go back in time and share that interview with each and every one of you. Well, guess what? You must have been on Brooklyn Zone's good list because I am back to share yet another interview from the 2007 Turnbuckle promotion. This time, I'm here to share my interview with Shannon Spruill, otherwise known as Daphne. Daphne started in WCW back in 1999 when she was paired up with David Flair. In this interview, she shares so many things, but I'm not going to get into it. I'm going to wait and have you guys sit back and enjoy the video. All I'm going to say is Daphne discusses some of her favorite career moments. She defends women's wrestling and so much more. That's it for now. You were nice enough for Brooklyn Zone to give you the tease. Sit back, enjoy, and then once the interview is over, we're going to come back to the podcast and we'll have a little discussion regarding Daphne. Stick around and enjoy. Were you a fan growing up? Yeah, I was. Um, I watched uh, every Saturday morning, and um, one of my most memorable, memorable moments watching was I was a big Snooker fan. And uh, he got pulled to the outside and got a pile driver. They pulled up the mats on the concrete and got taken away with a big neck brace. And it's like, why did they have to do that to him? So um, that I was hooked at a very young age. It was courtesy of Raider Cripple Stevens when he, when that happened. Is that who it was? I was trying to remember because someone else asked me a similar question, and, and for some reason I thought it was Piper, but I couldn't remember who it was. So that's I just remember I was a Snooker fan, so all I really cared about was Snooker, and I was like, oh. So yeah, I, w I was a fan. How do you feel about having an active in-ring role? Oh, I love it. I hate it when you go to the ring and you just stand ringside and you don't do anything. Uh, I, I, I always want to get in there and do a spot or do something to be involved in the match. I think it's kind of a waste to have a manager or a tag team partner where you're, you know, because I mean I do both. I manage and I wrestle, um, where you're just out there doing anything. So it's kind of a, you know a waste. There's so many different possibilities when you have another person involved so okay. do you think the uh, um, were you scared rather to take bumps no no not at all first thing I learned how to do was a Frankensteiner off the top rope so obviously I wasn't scared <laughs> I mean but there are things that you do that are scary but um, and, it, and, and the training is definitely hard and tedious and it takes a long time but um, and things are scary but I wasn't scared to try so, um, but you know, some things you tried and it hurt and you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that again. But uh, I wasn't, I definitely wasn't scared to try. I was very eager to get in there and learn. How do you feel about male promoters and wrestlers who say women's wrestling hurts the business and cheapens the product? Um, I just think that that's just kind of a statement that um, it's kind of unintelligent. I mean, women wrestling, women can have matches that on a card can just add to it. If you have an entire match of, uh, of you know, men's or tag match, a hardcore match or whatever, and then you got one good woman's match, it, it adds to the show. It doesn't take away. And, and unless you got two girls that are out there that don't know what they're doing, um, it, it can do nothing but enhance it, you know? I'm not saying have, you know, three women's matches, but I mean, one good women's match, or then you always have the all-girl promotions like Shimmer, which I work for, which that's some of the greatest wrestling I've ever seen. So, and a chick fight. I mean, their, their last few releases is, is just amazing, the wrestling. Girls come over from Europe and put in the European style. They got, we got girls that have been down in Mexico. I mean, they know how to go. So I think that any promoter that says, oh, a women's match is not going to help, is, is just doesn't, has never seen a good women's match. However, you know, it, you know they, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because and then people, I don't know, some people think that it takes away, but I, I think it enhances. I think it, I think it makes it, gives you variety. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I just think women's matches are, are, you know, if you, have, if you do it right, it can be, you don't do, uh, 
I don't know, a, like I said, a cat fight match. That's going to be eh. But if you have like a good woman's match, it's going to really add to your card. So. Okay. And is it true you were once roommates with uh, Mickey James? Yes. Um, Mickey Butt, that's what I call her. Um, she was uh, in Louisville. Um, she was my roommate, and uh, I still keep in touch with her. Love her to death. When she won the belt, I was just like, congrats, champ. And she's just genuinely such a good person. And then not only just friend-wise, but then we lived together, so we were roommates. And we got along amazingly as roommates. So obviously, if you can live with someone and still remain really, really good friends, obviously, they're a good person. And our personalities are very similar. So we just had a ball. We had a ball. She's a great person. Mm -hmm. Did very, you happy for her. very happy for her. That's great. Did you ever have a chance working with WWE? Yeah, that's where I was. Uh, I was in OVW, and I was in Louisville. I had gotten signed. She called me about two months after I'd gotten signed and said, "I just got signed." And I said, "I just happen to have a two-bedroom apartment." And she, well, she asked me, you know, what apartment complexes should she look at? Da da da. And I said, "Well, I have a two-bedroom. Come live with me." So then she came. So it was great. Mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts about the lack of kayfabe in pro wrestling today? And, you know, it's like it's like uh, hot and cold. Uh, I personally, like, if I'm at a show and I am, I have a match or I'm involved in a match where you know you have to talk to your opponents. I don't like the fans to see that. However, you know, people writing books, people doing shoot interviews, things like that. I mean, it's just it's it's the norm nowadays. Fans want to see that. So there, you're breaking kayfabe. But who hasn't done a shoot interview? So, you know, it's, and, and then like, you know, when I, when I wrestle under a mask, I don't like people to see me without, you know, yeah. so it's just, it's just, you know, it, you got to pick your battles there. And there are times when I really like to respect that. And then there's other times where, you know, I, you know, shoot interviews are interesting to watch. So it's like, you know, I'm kind of like on the fence about that one. I got one last question for you. What is your favorite moment? I have a couple. And that's why I was like, I said, I, and I'm you're getting ready to go say hi to him. I took a pile driver from Terry Funk in England in a two th March 2000 tour. And I was just in awe. It was great. I took the figure four from Ric Flair. He gave, he schoolboyed me up to win the WCW Heavyweight Championship for the 15th time. And then he put the figure four on me on live nitro. Amazing. Then when I won the cruiserweight belt. So uh, only two women ever held the WCW belt, myself and Medusa. Such an honor to be, you know, former WCW Cruiserweight Champion. Uh, that's like probably the, those are the three, I, I don't have just one, those, I have three. And those are my three favorites. That's great, and I really thank you for your time. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Turnbuckle. Thanks. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. So there you have it. That's the interview that Brooklyn Zone conducted with Daphne back in 2007. She was great to talk to, very informative, a pleasure. You know, it's too bad, you know, what happened happened. You know, may Daphne rest in peace. For those of you who don't know, she passed away last year, September of 2021. But, uh, you know, all of her body of work that she created will live eternally in the archives of wrestling. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview in the stripped down memory lane. That's all I got for now. As always, the pleasure is all yours. And just to give you a little tease, coming up next will be another archive from 07. You'll see a couple interviews that Brooklyn Zone also did that day where I interviewed another late, great legend, the late, great Luna Vachon. You'll see that uh, interview, as well as an interview I did with an 80s icon, a baby doll, who was very well known. She was managing back in the day, Tully Branchett, Dusty Rhodes, Magnum TA, the list goes on and on. So that's all I got for now. I'm Brooklyn Zone Toddy D. The pleasure's been all yours. And you know what? You can like, you can subscribe. That's up to you. If you don't do it, it's your loss. But hey, you know the drill. Take care. Be well. Brooklyn Zone is out. We'll see you soon.